Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be looking at the Time More Black Mirror brew scales. I've started looking at different brew scales recently as I managed to drown my Barista Smart Scale 2. So recently I reviewed the My Way Barista and you can watch that video here after or watch it now but make sure you come back. And I was impressed with these scales for the price. They're roughly a third of the price of the Barista Smart Scale 2 about an eighth of the price of the Akaya Luna, and they're pretty good. But then I was sent these scales, the Time More Black Mirror. I've not opened them yet, I'm about to do that with you, but I've read up on them and they're really interesting. I'll quickly tell you what I found particularly interesting about them, and then I'll do the unboxing and see if the actual scales live up to the impression I've gained of them. I think they're supposed to look like a black mirror when turned on, hence the name. No buttons, no screen, just a solid black surface. I don't know if that's useful, but it's cool, I imagine. I suppose it makes them more waterproof, maybe. They have no gaps, no buttons, and so on. Height-wise, which is important for espresso, depending on your machine, the five mil shorter than the Maui Barista, seven mil taller than the Barista Smart Scale 2, and 10 mil taller than the Akaya Luna. So for some espresso machines with smaller clearance under the portafilter spouts, they're likely to be a bit on the tall side as are the My Way Barista. Obviously that won't matter if you're using them for manual brewing. This wouldn't be an issue with the Sage or Breville Bambino Plus and other Sage or Breville machines as they tend to have a decent cup clearance under the portafilter. The Gadget Classic Pro struggles a bit for cup clearance under the spout. You can increase this with the naked porter filter, which are also very cool, and by fitting a low profile drip tray. And these things will cost money, but they won't cost as much as buying the Akaya Luna if you're buying it just because it's shorter. Footprint wise, they're a bit smaller than the chunky My Way Barista, still quite a bit bigger footprint wise than the Barista Smart Scale 2. Although when it comes to footprint, I don't have a problem with the bigger My Way Barista, to be honest. I've always found the Barista scales to be a bit too small for weighing a full-sized 58mm portafilter. And with the Akaya Luna, which is very small, you have to put a platform on top of the scale for weighing a portafilter, if you are weighing your portafilter. They're rated as accurate to the tenth of a gram as are the My Way Barista and the Smart Scale 2. The Akaya Luna, by the way, are rated as accurate to the 1,000th of a gram, so that's next level precision. But the Luna's over four times the price of the Black Mirror. They're rechargeable, as are the My Way Barista and the Smart Scale 2, but interestingly, they're fast chargeable via USB Type-C, which is a charging method most modern smartphones now use, except iPhone. So that's handy in terms of charging speed, but also, if like me, you tend to lose charging cables, you can just plug it into your phone charger, unless you're an Apple user. They apparently give 10 hours of continuous use from one charge via the 1600 milliamp battery, which is impressive. The Brewster Smart Scale 2 lasts seemingly forever on one charge, and they have a smaller 1000 milliamp battery. In terms of features, it doesn't have all of the many different modes of the Brewster Smart Scale 2, but to be honest, I only ever used one mode on the Brewster, and I found switching between modes to be a real art form. I'm not sure if the set I had were faulty or something, but I'm sure it's not supposed to be that difficult to switch modes. Anyway, personally, I'd only ever used two modes either fully manual or auto timer if the scales have that mode. And the Black Mirror does have this mode, which is one of the things that interests me about it. Because the auto timer mode, if it works properly, I think is a brilliant feature. As you don't have to faff around pressing the start timer button at the same time as pressing the shot button. Or if you're manually brewing, you don't have to press the timer button at the same time as you're starting the pour, which makes it a little bit easier, I think. So that's all in theory. Let's unbox the Time More Black Mirror scales and see what they're like in practice. This is the first time I'm doing this, by the way. Certification. Does that make me a certified coffee brother? No, it doesn't. You have to subscribe to this channel to become one of them. Instructions, rubber thing. And here's the scales. Oh, I could just turn them on. So let's open the bag. And that's good, I think. Tells you where the power button is, where the charging port is. And it tells you how to use it. But I'm just going to pull that off. 
Let's see if I can figure it out. Looking at it from the top, it's just one black block. I don't know about the black mirror. It's slightly shiny, but I suppose black matte doesn't have the same ring to it. There's no on button. There's no screen. That's it. But looking at the charging port on the top right, the bottom right should be the on button. And there you go. It's on. And the LEDs, etc. look really bright. I like that. It feels okay weight-wise. feels fairly heavyweight. But it is all plastic. And I would imagine something like the Akaya Luna, which is all aluminium, to feel much more durable and much higher quality. But that is over four times the price of these scales. They look quite good in terms of being waterproof, which I'm guessing is the main reason for the solid design versus having a separate platform that the water can get under, as with other scales, including the Barista Smart Scale 2. But one obvious issue there is they've not put a cap or plug or whatever on the charging port. And to me, that seems a little bit daft. They've gone to all of the trouble making one solid block, making it completely waterproof, and then they've left the charging port open. So I'm not quite sure what the thinking is behind that, but I would imagine it would benefit from having a cover over the charging port. I'm sure it's easy enough to stick a wedge of blue tack or something in there to make it waterproof, but it surprises me that the manufacturer hasn't thought of that, to be honest. Other than that little observation though, they look really cool. I do like the look of them. So turn them on again. And then standard mode, you put the cup on, press the power button again to tear, and then just press the timer button. And then it starts timing. And then press the timer button to stop it or pause. You can start it again if you want. Or you can press and hold to reset. And that tears it again as well. So that's good. But it's the auto timer mode I'm really interested in. So let's try that. I believe that if I press the timer button about eight times fast, it should put us in to the auto timer mode. So let's try that. And there we go. There's an A there now indicating that we're in the auto timer mode. So if I put the glass on and then tear it, if I press the timer button, it should count down three, two, one, and then be ready for the shot to pour. And then when the shot starts pouring, as soon as liquid enters the glass or as soon as it detects as weight, it will start the timer automatically. So let's try three, two, one, ready. It started timing automatically. Seems very responsive. That's good. And then stop it. And it's displaying the time and it's displaying the weight. That's what I was hoping for. So I'm going to try this now, pulling a shot with the Sage or Breville Bambino Plus, and let's see it in action. I'm going to put this rubber thing on. Which I'm guessing is mainly to stop the plastic surface getting scratched. I don't think this is gonna have a great deal. Might make a bit of difference in terms of insulation, stopping the heat getting through, but it's quite thin, so I think it's probably just to stop the plastic surface getting scratched more than anything else. Put the port filter on. And as you can see, it fits on really well. But I suppose, I should turn the scales on. As you can see, the LEDs are really bright. Just bear in mind that there is, I believe, a white version. I've not seen it in the UK, but I've seen on some American reviews there's a white version that doesn't display the digits, the LEDs, very bright. Because you can imagine, you know, light blue and white, you wouldn't be able to see it very well. But on the black one, as you can see, it's bright. Oh, good. And as you can see, I'm in the auto timer mode. So put the porter filter on and tear. And then let's grind some coffee. 
put the glass on, tear. So when I press the timer button, it will count down, tell me it's ready. Three, two, one. Now it's ready. So let's start the shot. Ignore the fact that I've obviously gone far too fine on the grind. Obviously this is about the scales, not about dialing in. But as you can see, it started timing automatically. And it's still timing. And then when I stop the shot and press the timer, it'll stop and tell me that it's pulled. Well, it's still dripping slightly. 6.9 grams and 28 seconds. So obviously I've choked the machine there, but it doesn't matter. This isn't about dialing in, it's about the scales. And as you can see, that worked perfectly. And there's plenty of room on the Sage Bambino Plus, as you can see under the porter filter on top of the scales. But I'm just gonna demonstrate now with the Gaja Classic. So as you can see, even without a glass or a cup, on there, there's very little clearance below the spout of the porter filter and the scales on the Gaja Classic Pro. And there's no way I'm gonna get that under there. In fact, even without the scales, you can only just get a small glass like this under the porter filter spout. So, the only way you'd get around that as I said earlier, is with a low profile drip tray, which you can get, and or a bottomless porter filter, so you don't have the spout. So that would give you more height. And with both them things, I would think you probably have just about enough clearance, depending on the size of your espresso glass or cup, of course. So there you go. You've seen me unboxing and using the Time More Black Mirror scales for the first time. And overall, I'm really impressed. I've only used them for a couple of hours while making this video. But as I say, for the price, so far, really, really impressed with these scales but I'm gonna use them constantly for the next couple of weeks and then I'm gonna come back and do a user review video once I've used them for long enough to detect any quirks and so on. But for now, thank you very much for watching. And if you blinked more than once while watching this video, that means you have to click the like button. Cheers. And if you like this video, why not click here to watch another one? What else are you gonna do? There's nothing on the telly. And don't forget to become an official coffee botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe to our channel. Tatty bye.